Hi, welcome. Welcome to our Karcher Women's Mugs and Muffins event that we have done now on Zoom. So we are so excited to have you join us, Kim and Carolina and I, Sarah. And we want to invite you to take a picture of your mug and tell us why it's special. And also, if you have your muffin with you, and I'm going to show you. Mine is be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 610. I just love it. I love, I love turquoise. I just love my little mug. There's Carolina's. What does it Jesus, say? Jesus, Jesus and coffee. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> and, mug. Well, and I just have a memory mug. I got it at the silos in, um, oh my word, in Waco. Um, when I went down there with my mom a couple of years ago. So it's my Silo's oh. Magnolia mug. So yay, happy things. And I have a little um, lemon poppy seed muffin I made and smells good. Yeah. And I have, I have yeah. an English muffin. <laughs> <laughs> yay, it's a muffin. Cool. Well, we are excited to have you with us, and um, this is the beginning of our Loving Well initiative, so Loving Well in Action, and today we're going to focus on Loving Well to Others, and we are so excited, Kim and I are so excited to have Carolita with us, and I just want to invite Kim, though, to open us up with prayer. Yes, I would love to do that. So, Father, thank you so much for um, your presence with us today. Thank you that even though we are having to do things um, in separate rooms and in separate homes, Lord, that you are there with us, Lord. It doesn't matter that, that we're gathered um, across the internet. Um, we are still gathered in your name and you are still here with us. And so we pray your blessing over this time. We pray that your Holy Spirit would um, take this message of loving well and um, just really let it sink into the hearts and minds of, of those who listen. And uh, may we just be your vessels today. I pray for Carolita as she shares. And may this just be a time of um, great insight and blessing from you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Carolita is my good friend, I'm happy to say. And she, I know firsthand, is a great example of loving others well. And uh, she... Uh, well, does a lot of loving well to others in, in, in deep relationships. And she, she's really a good example of that. And so I just want to welcome Carolina to share with us. Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I would never have imagined sharing on this level with anyone um, because it's a, area that we all do things differently when we love people. Mm -hmm. And my, <clears throat> my journey has been over many, many years. Your journey may just be starting. Mm -hmm. I hope it is for many of you that you get inspired to really venture out and do something maybe you have never, ever done before. Mm -hmm. That's what happened in my life. I am naturally someone who loves to be with people. I, I think that I have an outgoing personality. I think that I naturally love being with people. I love to hug. I, that's part of me. But I want to reassure all of you listening that God has created us differently. Mm. We're all different. Can you imagine if everyone was like me? That would be terrible. <laughs> no, it, it, it is because God has created us differently. He can use us in situations that another person could never mm. be a part of. Yeah. He could never touch a person's life like you. And God knows that. So <clears throat> I was put to the test about five years ago because I had always been outgoing. I'd always loved people. I'd been a missionary and wanted the whole world to come to Jesus. And I also was a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. And I was with lots of lots of different people. But what I want to tell you is an incredible experience five years ago. 
someone in my church was moving to Arizona and she said, you've got to call this person. They don't go to church. They are ready to end their life. Their husband has just died at 41 years old and he has three teenagers and she has no one. Her mom and dad, she's been very far estranged from them. Uh, and she has been in and out of mental institutions. And I got the whole story. But then listen to this. She said, you're the only one that I believe God has called hmm. me and told me you need to do this. Call her. <laughs> so I argued with, with God for three days. Because I said I was too busy. Mm -hmm. I have other friends. Mm -hmm. I have other people that need me. Uh, no, I think it sounds like she just needs professional help. And I am not that person. And I had all kinds of excuses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what I did. After arguing with God for three days, I prayed very specifically that he would give me a real true sign that this is what I was to do. Mm. And rather, not nervously, but with some hesitation, <laughs> I picked up the phone and called. <clears throat> and the person who answered was this sweet, quiet, very troubled young woman. And I told her who I was and the connection that we had. And that began a journey that I would never have believed I would be on today hmm. through uh, very many different serious situations. God continued to teach me, get into the word, because I have other things I want to teach you. Now, how many of you feel that way? Yeah. That yes. you've yes. already read the Bible like I had read it, you know, quite a few times all the way through. Mm -hmm. I know Bible and I have memorized scripture and oh listen what and the Lord says get into the word prepare yourself mm. so that's what you need to do when God calls you and I think he is calling all of us to love others and to love others uh, well mm -hmm. not just be nice to them but to love well mm. and not only just to a big crowd but to love individuals. Yeah. Take time to love someone. And you go, well, I know I'm, I got a busy schedule and I'm too tired. And you know, you can make up all kinds of excuses. Yeah. But when you finally say yes to the Lord, his timing is always perfect. The person he chooses for you is perfect. Hmm. Then <laughs> when he says, get in the word, he gives you wisdom. Mm -hmm. We cannot go just on our own knowledge or our own training or our own experiences, even though those help. We go on what God gives to us out of his word. And he will feed your mind and your heart with his truth. So then you can begin to share that. That's good. And it's powerful. I, I have to tell you, it's powerful because it's not just your opinion. It's not just your human love mm -hmm. but it is powerful because it's his word mm -hmm. it's his saying i love this person do not be afraid do not be anxious there's so many verses about peace and most people who god puts into our lives are troubled in one way or another or have some form of need don't you think yes yes well yeah. In doing the first step, <laughs> you have to realize it's not your love alone because we are loving people. God has put love in us. Yes. But it's his love that's working. It's yeah. his love that will get over that mountain mm -hmm. and through that difficulty or through that wondering, what in the world am I doing? Mm hmm God's love will transcend. And we have to believe that. We have to trust it. Okay. I don't, you know, I'm sorry. I sound like I'm preaching. No, good. No. I, no, 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 no. But when I say um, that I work with this person, 
in the past, the Lord has all brought into my life as a pastor's wife, several people going through very horrible uh, molestation, mm -hmm. going through verbal abuse and physical abuse, through divorce, through mm -hmm. um, suicide, through um, someone just coming out of prison after five years and being away from her children. I've been with another person. So see, each time in these last, really 10 years since I've been back in America, God has done this. And I just want you to know, every single one is different and it's God chosen. Mm -hmm. It is God chosen. Wow. And so he knows, he knows his timing, he chooses, and he gives wisdom. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Um, I've uh, read some scripture even early this morning, and just, just to be uh, encouraged myself to share, to let you know that God has given every one of us strength to do things that we don't think we can do. Mm -hmm. So true. So we can say, get through. Would you say, Carolina, that, um, that when you said it's God chosen, would you say that it's something that I don't just decide someday that I'm going to go out and start loving this person that, that I want to love because I see something in them. So, I think, God chooses, I think God chooses Kim by putting that in your heart first. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so you go, oh, I really, really would like to help this person, or I'd like to hear their story, or I would like to show them love. Because God says, I'm going to put that love in you so that you can love others. Right. And he <laughs> said in the commandment, love God first and then love your neighbor as yourself. So it's already there yeah so it's a combination it isn't like god just coming down and saying okay <laughs> there it is here's this no. person on your doorstep yeah that's right even though i didn't get a doorstep one but mm -hmm. i but i i believe in general normally god puts a desire in your heart mm -hmm. to reach out good good would you and, say and, that oh sorry carolina go yeah go ahead go ahead I was going to say, um, because I know you, um, and when I invited you to share um, at our deeper conference it, uh, uh -huh. the year before this one, particularly um, on this subject, and I know you said, well, I need to pray about it. Mm -hmm. and you hadn't done that specifically before. And um, can you tell us a little bit, how did you know? That this was a subject that God had laid on you to um, help. <laughs> oh, yeah. three years ago. I remember specifically when you asked, and I kind of said, why me? Mm. Um, and another reason I said that is because I would think too many people would say, oh, well, that's Carolita. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. they would excuse themselves maybe in doing yeah. anything because mm -hmm. they couldn't be like me. And you know, again, I just want to say, I guess part of the reason is that I wanted to break that down and let people know that God chooses all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just the outgoing person. He chooses mm -hmm. everyone. And it's very simple. It's just obeying what we know as a still small voice. Yeah. And, and when I remember that, it's that. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it was. And, and I remember that day because, um, you, you know, it wasn't just like any, what you were saying with any of these ladies that God's laid on your heart. I mean, it, it takes time. Yeah. It takes work. Oh, it yeah. takes be, all of those things. And so, you know, we don't want to step into that lightly. And, and you want right. to do what God's leading you to do. And so I, I remember that particular day. Um, okay, Sarah, I'm going to pray about this, right? which is uh -huh. a thing to do. and we want God to lead us. Right. And definitely right. I want you to do something. If there's a person that he wants you to um, specifically invest in, right. And love. Well, he's, he's going to let you know. So that particular day, I remember that um, God had showed you in multiple ways 
and it was kind of funny, but he kind of stays honest, right? In a right, way, right. It feels like when when um, you know God is leading you to something, and yeah, and even though you're reluctant, yes, he is. He is faithful, and he knows our heart. He knows our gifts. He's given each of us different gifts. He knows the yeah. right person. So I, I, I. In most cases, I give in to him quite quickly, <laughs> only because I'm old enough now to realize what has happened over all these years, yeah. that he's been faithful and mm -hmm. what he's done is, has been mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And so anyway, I, I just want you to realize um, that everyone, God calls everyone to True. love, yeah. to love, to love. So so you had said um, on this first gal that um, that God <laughs> partnered you up with. Um, yeah. You you said something to the effect that that she just needs professional help, right? Uh -huh. um, yes. So what what would you say to someone who felt called to definitely they know God's calling them right to to minister mm -hmm. to to love this person. And really that's all it is. It's just loving this person, being a part of their lives, letting them into your life. Um, not that there don't need to be boundaries there. You know, oh, definitely, definitely. But what would you say to somebody who feels called, but they, but they feel overwhelmed by the issues that this person has? I mm -hmm. mean, what would you say to them? Well, first of all, God would not give you something that he cannot help you with. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you to admit that you're not able to do everything. Okay. Um, and that's, that's where I came to the conclusion that there is a reason why I am here doing what I'm doing with this person, because the other professionals aren't able to do that. And right. so I understood that. I understood it from that standpoint. Another issue that I had to deal with him was the fact that uh, in the past, people would use up my time because there was no desire to change. There was no, they, all they wanted was sympathy and to yeah. really uh, just talk and talk and talk and talk and do nothing. Yeah. And I, I, on my particular calendar at that time, I was very, very much involved in many different areas to not think I could handle anything else and yeah. I was overwhelmed so I that's why I argued with the Lord for three days do you see this do you see this no I can't no 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 and I think it was because of past experience of being um probably used by others that, that drained me yeah and I mm -hmm. thought this would be another draining person mm. But I will, I will say to you today that not one single time in five years have I ever felt drained. Hmm. That's beautiful. And, so, and, and, oh. and the, one of the reasons why, and I just want to say this real quickly, I wrote them down. Um, <clears throat> you know, you have, to, you have to, first of all, pray and believe that God has done this for you to give you that opportunity and then you need to be um, ready to listen and not just give advice you need to be able to maybe set some ground rules yeah um, you need to be able to be clear about boundaries and time that you have not to put anyone down but I said you listen Listen carefully to the person. Yeah. Listen carefully first. Then you can ask questions or you can give advice if God gives you wisdom to give. But listen carefully. So much will come out when you're just listening. Yeah. And then you're going down the right path <laughs> instead of your own path with the person thinking, oh, I can solve this problem real fast mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> if they'll just listen to me. <laughs> and yeah. you need to listen to them first. And then um, you let them make their own decisions. Don't force them into making decisions that you have decided. 
right. but helping them to make their own decision and then be accountable. You know, how important it is for them to realize someone cares enough to ask them, how did you do that? Are yeah. you doing all right today? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those are just some key things that once you get involved, but first of all, pray about the way God wants to use you to love others well. Yeah. That's yeah, good. because I think it's it's different for everybody. Like you said in the beginning, anybody can do this. It's not it's not just Carolita, you know. Yeah. And, and oh we, my, have, oh, yeah. we have many friends who do it very differently. Who do it more of like a one time encounter thing. We think of our friends oh, that's right. who just has this text ministry that she texts yes to people and it's every day. And that is so loving, and she has so yes. many relationships that have formed through that and I love that and she is so sensitive to the Holy Spirit in in obeying what he wants her to do in the moment for anybody yeah. and um, exactly it doesn't have to be a drawn out no 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 five years long time but, but it can be I agree. Uh -huh. yeah but yeah. I agree I agree and I think also we uh, have a tendency to think we have to do it in a certain way or a certain time and we don't. Mm -hmm. God, God will, God will very, very easily guide us. I mean, that's what Proverbs says: mm -hmm. "Don't lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge who He is, and yeah. He will direct our path. He'll guide us." And that's, you know, to get before the Lord every day, every morning, and say, "Lord, I'm here today. Who is it that you want me to be a part of their life?" even if it's only a word of encouragement or if it's sending a card mm -hmm. or if it's making a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, there's different ways to show love. You don't have to be always with the person, mm -hmm. but there are other ways and it's just obeying how God chooses your gifts. It might be making a cake and giving it to your neighbor. Yeah. It's uh there's so many different ways. I love, I love what you said about um, when I asked you the question about people who have really difficult issues, maybe some mental health issues, and you recognize that because oh, I love yes. what you said though, because a counselor can't be their friend. A counselor can't go. That's right. A counselor can't go to coffee with them um, or right go grocery shopping with them or have them do That's their laundry right. in their house. You know, a counselor can't do those things for them. And so I love that you, that you brought that to the surface. What, what is my role? What can I do for this exactly. person? Not what I can't do, but what can yeah, I, do? I, think, do? I think we have to be careful <laughs> at the point. And I, you know, that's exactly what I've done in each of these cases. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we have to remember that God will, give us opportunity to do things differently with yeah. someone and not necessarily to bring them to a spiritual crisis decision immediately. I think the love is first of all, what God wants us to show. Mm -hmm. And that makes a whole difference. They'll know we're Christian by our love. Uh, they're not a project. People are not yeah, a project. Yeah. No, and it's and it's not the same with everyone at all. Right. It is different with every single person mm -hmm. because we're all different and we all have different needs. And I don't have all the answers. And boy, I'll tell you, uh, when things <laughs> things have come up, I said, "Wow, I don't know that at all." Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, "I'm glad you talked about it." But I'll tell you what: if I could find an answer, I certainly will. And then when we get back together, we'll we'll share it. Yeah. But I said, I, you know, there's no way I could, I could answer that today. And I'm just, yeah. you know, you just, you just say it and say, right. that's the way, that's mm -hmm. the way it is. I have a question. So there's a lot of people that have been hurt in relationships and find it really risky <laughs> to um, step out and to put themselves out there. Right. So how, how, what, yeah. How can you, what would you say to them? Uh, because they've been hurt uh -huh. and because they're afraid to step out. Yes. 
Well, first of all, I said, I'm always here to pray with you. They understand my position of believing in God. They understand that I have seen many miracles. They know that I am a praying person. And I said, you know, let's just start with prayer. And they're kind of surprised, but I feel God wants to encourage them at the scary moments to trust him. I have several verses that I share with them. You know, don't be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Mm -hmm. And God will give you a peace that the world doesn't even understand, but the peace will keep your heart and your mind at rest mm -hmm. as you trust him. And I like that fact of both the heart and the mind mm -hmm. is what God is concerned about. And our minds just go over and over again, especially in situations like divorce or in unfaithfulness or in um, anger and things that are just gotten really bad. Uh, I'm working with one girl. She just wrote me last night. I've been with her for 11 years now and uh, seen her through unbelievable stuff and she's living with another guy and she's been a drug addict but she says you're the only person I can talk to I got a text last night at 10 o'clock yeah and um uh, it's it's very serious it's very very serious yeah and and what do you say to people I always start with the fact God loves you and he cares about where you are right now today yeah and I can pray because I believe in that God mm -hmm. and I would be happy to pray with you. And I said, you know, we can try to find, you know, a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't play the role of counselor or, um, or, mm -hmm. or therapist, mm -hmm. but I do play the role of someone who believes in God and believes in his promises. Carolina, yeah. I, I just had this thought, so I'm going to go with it. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I, I just, I'm just feeling for people whose hearts have been broken in relationships and, and women with other women and uh -huh. um, friendships and that kind of thing. And so could you, could you just pray for them specifically right now for those people who are who, hurting? Yeah. Who, who people in the church. Have, yeah. 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 Who've been hurt by other women. Yeah. And, and unfortunately that happens and, um, those hearts need to be healed. So yes. God loves them. Yeah. You, you want me to pray right now? Right now. Right now. Okay. Right now. I can do that. I can do that. Okay. Lord Jesus, I am so thankful that we can stop any time in any place and we can pray a simple prayer of help. Lord, give us the joy of knowing that you want us to be willing to put aside our own feelings and look to the other person who is hurting as well. Mm. Help us, Lord, with compassion. Compassion for the other person. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I pray that because I learned that myself and I know what you did for me. Mm. For compassion. Lord, help us to have a sense of being willing to listen to you mm -hmm. and in this quiet moment right now lord i pray for your healing touch yeah. over people's yeah. feelings mm -hmm. which sometimes aren't exactly how the other person is reacting but mm -hmm. how you are helping them to feel mm -hmm their feelings and how they need to have compassion yeah. lord i am convinced that you love everybody in this world and you have a chance to help them mm -hmm. you have a chance to help them come to a new sense of quietness in their soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you said i am your strength I will be your protector. I will help you. Do not fear. And we sometimes live on that fear, Lord. We know. What is she going to say? What is she going to do? How is she going to look at me? Mm -hmm. 
And how am I going to look back at her when I'm so hurt? So Lord, I pray in this moment that they, whoever is listening, will just stop and say, God, I trust you today to help me love with your love. Yeah. And Lord, you, you are the healer of our minds and our emotions and our, our real heart. Mm -hmm. And if we need to ask for forgiveness, Lord, help us to say that. Forgive me, Lord, for holding in my anger or my resentment. Help me to love in a way that I've never known before mm -hmm. with someone who has hurt me. Help me to love with your love because I can't do it anymore with my own. Mm -hmm. And may I see you next to that person saying, I died for her. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, lift the burden. Mm -hmm from each woman that is suffering today. I know you can do it because you did it for me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In your powerful name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. 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 Thank you. That was beautiful. Oh, That's my goodness. So oh, my goodness. Yes. You know, it is serious, though, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We as women are very sensitive and we're emotional. We carry our emotions up very much on the outward. We can hardly cover it up on our faces. Mm -hmm. True. Um, we, we show up much easier than men do. And so when someone has hurt us, you know, we can't be fake. And that's why God needs to do something yeah. in us. Yeah. So yeah. study compassion. Study what it really means to show compassion. <laughs> oh my goodness okay. oh my goodness is it time is it getting time what's happening you know, they i just got a message that they have removed the 40 minute time limit so we can go oh. if we need to um i have a well, question what do we have about five minutes six minutes you whatever okay have about five minutes six yeah it's about six all minutes right. so we don't have okay. to go over so all right but i have a question that i would like yeah. you to go into um let, talk a little bit about about what boundaries look like Oh, because I think one. we need to be very specific. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Number one boundary is the time alone with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do not let the time alone with the Lord be put aside because you feel this other problem or this person needs your time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let the boundary be solid if you mm -hmm. spend time with word or in prayer or in devotion reading jesus calling or mm -hmm. high at or his highest or a book that you felt really encouraged about get into that and read at least at least one scripture a day yeah. that will be helpful to you mm -hmm. take care of yourself first yeah mm -hmm. that's a boundary yeah. be clear mm -hmm. And, and if they're busy with you and saying, oh, I need you right now, say, I have something to do and I will get back to you. Yeah. Always don't let anything come in to interfere with your own personal life with the Lord. Yeah. That is a boundary. A second boundary is your family. Mm -hmm. That is a priority. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. let people mm -hmm. take away from what you know you need with your family mm -hmm. your husband your children or your grandchildren mm -hmm. don't let don't let the person usurp the time that is necessary mm -hmm. for that boundary yeah have very clear That's so good. god god good. and family yeah i think ministry is always after those two mm -hmm. i felt that the whole time, 30 years yep. in France, that was more important than saving the world. Now, God will step in and say, this is an emergency. And there's a difference between emergency and just sure. continuing a relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Does that help? Yeah, I think so. And I, and I think um, 
I think it's okay. Not we're not counselors, right? We're not giving no. people advice, but at the same time, I think we kind of need to um, maybe kind of have a little bit of a of um, not that that not that the person we're helping needs to make an appointment with us, although we might have a set time yes. we meet once a week or every other week. Um, but I think sometimes it's okay to say, I go to bed at 10 o'clock, so please don't oh, absolutely. Call me or text me after that. I get up absolutely. at eight o'clock, so please don't call me or text me before that unless it is an emergency. That's right? exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. And don't feel guilty when making right. those particular boundaries. See, they can make you feel guilty or you can make yourself feel guilty, yeah. but don't because you are taking right. care of yourself. Yeah. See, if you yeah. let them call at two o'clock in the morning just because they're awake, that's yeah. not mm -hmm. helping you with your sleep. Well, and that's mm -hmm. when you will get overwhelmed. Yeah. That's when you, will, you will feel right. Yeah, right. actually. And so don't make yourself feel guilty in mm -hmm. setting boundaries. You will actually feel more free yeah. and more available when you have done the boundaries that you've set. Yeah. And I think time is Good, another thing add. as a boundary. Time. You know, some Good. people don't have Good. to do as much as we do. Right. And so they can spend an hour. But I have other things that yeah. have to get done. And so I will sometimes say, you know what? Oh, I'm so glad you called, or I'm so glad I can see you right now. But I do have this scheduled. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's okay. Yeah. Because if it goes over and over and over limits, then they're in control instead of mm -hmm. you. Right. Yeah. I think that's so great. Time I wanted to add one thing. I'm um, slipping. Yeah. Okay, real quick. Uh, I, I just want to say that we're not responsible for anybody else's thoughts, feelings, or actions, no. and, um, and to not take responsibility for that. Um, we're just there to, to show love and to do whatever God leads us to do. And as he's filling us up with his love and it's pouring out, it's a beautiful thing. And Carolita, uh, real quick, how does that affect you through the, um, what would, how would you sum up how it affects you by this um, journey of loving others well? How has it affected me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, in 30 words or less. <laughs> Um, I, I have learned a new trust in the Lord and his power. I have learned um, <clears throat> to be more patient in, in not wanting um, something to be solved immediately. Mm -hmm. Things are not solved immediately mm -hmm. with certain people. I, I have learned um, that God's word is very powerful and I need to depend on it every day mm. um i have found a time of devotion to be um meaningful and um uh, enriching to my life oh i mean i can go on sarah those They're, are good those are powerful <laughs> yeah i i i uh i look back on it and i say boy i wish i would have started earlier Aw, I'm yeah. so glad you did start. I'm glad you listened <laughs> to God um, nudging you and um, that you've been obedient and you continue to be obedient and you're such a great example and I'm glad you're my friend. <laughs> I'm glad too. So Kim, do you want to wrap us up? Yeah. Um, well, we just want to, we hope we're going to have a lot of people watching this. Um, we want to thank you if you had and um, just know that you can contact Sarah or I or Carolita, or you can comment on the anytime. Um, if you have any questions, you can message us. Um, we want to encourage you, um, especially during this really odd time when um, we're yes. stuck in our homes, to be creative. Um, be creative on how you love other people. Um, send them an email. Send an email or or a, a letter to someone that you that you may not even really talk to that much. Um, just get in touch with them and tell them that you're thinking about them. But we really want to just encourage you to continue to, to check in with the page. We're going to be talking to some more people 
about loving well um, in other, other areas of our lives and um, how they go about doing that and what God has done in their lives. Um, we just think that God right now is all about um, showing his love to people in this time where fear is so prevalent. Oh, yes. Fear, um, fear is cast out by perfect love. And so when we right. love people, um, the fear has no place to, to land. So um, mm. I just wanna encourage you to keep going, to love your family well, to first of all, love God well, <laughs> love you well, take care of you during this That's time. Right. And, right. Um, and then love others. And um, we just wanna bless you. We just want to speak that blessing over you that God would turn his face toward you and um, may his light surround you and shine upon you and may his love just surround you and um, may his protection be upon you on this time and on your bodies and on your family's bodies, on your health and your finances. We just pray his protection and his provision for everything that you need. He owns it all. He owns it all. He That's has right. every thing that you could ever need. And, um, we just pray that you would turn to him during this time. Um, Amen. So that is all, yes. I believe. All right. Thank that you. Okay. Blessings to everyone. Blessings. <laughs>